So, you'd rather we'd left you to die? What do you think? I'll tell you what I think, shall I, Trudy? I think you've got a chip on your shoulder the size of a house. None of us can do anything right according to you, and the way things are right now, we could all do without having to babysit your problems, which is exactly what we've had to do since you got here. Now, if you want to sit there and sulk like a prize prat, you can go ahead. But just don't expect anyone to understand that. Oh, and another thing. If you think we did it for your sake, you're not even close. Welcome to episode 22 of Conversational Eagle Mountain, a podcast about the tribe. I'm your host, Lance, and joining me on the panel today is Liz. Hello. Hill. Hey. And Sabine. Hi. With episode notes done by Matt, Kata, and myself. Episode 22, the screenplay was done by Joe Boyle. It was directed by Lawrence Wilson, and the episode synopsis will be read out by myself. Tensions are high within the Morats. Trudy has woken from her self-imposed slumber, becomes confrontational with Amber, and gives Bray the silent treatment. Meanwhile, Sandra has her suspicions about Celine's involvement in Trudy's overdose. The relationship between Dow and Jack grows worse, as Dow grows more interested in the human condition than in technology. So episode 22 um, begins with the Queen of Tongue Lashings, Abelette's rip into an ungrateful Trudy who accuses her of playing God and not letting her die. And it's within this speech that Amber puts Trudy in her place, reminding her that they've been babysitting her since she arrived, and that they only saved her life because of Brady, nothing else. So just focus on that for a moment. Um, do you believe that Amber was in the right or wrong to know that at this point in time at Trudy, especially considering everything that she's going for at the moment? I think we've been waiting for it, and it finally happened, and I think Amber was perfectly within her reason to say all of that, because it's true. It's true, yeah, but um, was this the right time? Because she's still recovering. She could have pushed her over the edge again. Yeah. I mean, yes, but it, you know, they've been taking an awful lot of care of Trudy, and I think someone needed to say it, and there probably will never be a good time with Trudy. You know, if it's not this time, it's the next time, and, you know, we see this cycle with Trudy. Hmm. Yeah, but so, after someone tries to commit suicide is definitely not the right time. Yeah, but I'm with I'm with Hill on this. I mean, they have tried every way to reach Trudy. They have tried sensitivity, tried kindness. Nothing has worked. So, I mean, Amber can't be blamed for at this point. She doesn't want to play therapist anymore, yeah. and it's not her responsibility to have to do that. If she was Trudy's therapist, then sure. She should be more responsible, but she's not. She's not. And she's been forced to be this girl's carer. And yeah, I, sometimes you have to stop tiptoeing around people and hold a mirror up to their faces, you know? And um, how far, I mean, Trudy's already tried to kill herself. So, I mean, it's not like she can tip her anymore over the edge. Yeah. She's already done it. And this is when everyone was trying to be really nice to Trudy. So, I. Yeah. I get it. I understand some people. It's like, oh, you know, she's so sensitive. But that doesn't give you a get out of jail free pass. You exactly. Know? And Trudy's had lots of them. So I just, I honestly don't care. I, I can understand why someone would be like, you know, I don't care anymore. I've been dancing around your feelings. I've had to manage your emotions. I'm done. I'm done. You need to know the truth about you. And again, it's she's only reacting to Trudy. Who immediately, you know, Amber's just checking on her. Are you okay? You know, and Trudy's just like, I hate you because you didn't let me die. And I can totally understand Amber going, okay, you know what? Here's exactly. the truth in your face. Like, Amber walked in trying to be, you know, the caretaker and the good person. And that's when Trudy flipped again. So... I mean, I think we all have people in our lives that we try and help, and eventually it gets to the point where you can't help them any longer, and the truth bomb needs to come out. Yeah. And I think at that point, you know, uh, Amber has had it, and that the truth bomb comes out. I know as a mom, you know, with my kids, I always go for sensitivity, positive reinforcement, um, validation of their feelings, and empathy first. 
But eventually, I have to use tough love with them. Eventually, I have to be like, okay, look, you know what? You don't like mommy right now. Mommy doesn't like you either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I didn't choose this. You know, uh, sometimes I have to do that with my son because he's a teenager and he gets stuck in his asshole mode, you know, and I have to let him know just how everybody feels about it. And I can't dance around his feelings. He needs to know the truth. And uh, it makes him think, oh, gee, my behavior affects the people around me and they shouldn't have to put up with it, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't, I, I have nothing wrong. I have no problem with what Amber says to Trudy and I don't have a problem with her doing it right now. Because again, she's only responding to how Trudy's treating her. I don't think Amber would have said any of that if Trudy had responded differently. Yeah, I'm with you on that one too. I mean, how much can you tolerate someone spitting in your face? Eventually, you're going to slap them, and they, they'll they have the nerve to be shocked. Like, I can't believe you slapped me. Like, well, I'm, I'm, my face is wet. I'm really sick of it, you know? You're uh, being a prick. I can't deal your disrespect and your disregard for my feelings, so I, I'm, I don't care about yours anymore. I really don't. And I think it's important for Trudy because she is used to people coddling her, and as we've all talked about, it doesn't teach her anything. Everybody enables this behavior so she doesn't learn that it's not right to do this. It's not okay to treat people this way. And um, you can't really change until you can see yourself and stop playing the victim and start recognizing the part you've played in your circumstances. I mean, we've all had a friend who's miserable to be around and they always complain that nobody wants to be around them. And eventually you lose it and you're just like, yeah, nobody wants to be around you because you're miserable. You know, I can't, I can't do it anymore either. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that he had to unload. I just have an issue with the timing. I don't, again, well, I don't, she's not, she's not Trudy's therapist. And again, it's not her responsibility to take care of, and yeah. she's been doing it. She's been taking care of Trudy. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it doesn't matter. So, Sabine, it doesn't matter with Trudy. Okay. No. So Hill even said it. Their timing would have never been right. Yeah. Like, okay. You you just had a baby. We can't bring it up now. You just had your mental breakdown. We can't bring it up now. You know, you're pining over Bray again because he walked out of the mall. We can't bring it up now. Like, there's never a good moment with her. There is. Of course there's never a good moment, but right after someone tried to kill themselves. Sorry, Sabine. I'm just I'm not. Sorry, yeah. Camp. And it's only, be again, this is because of Trudy's pattern of behavior. This is not exactly. like... You know, yeah, I know we both really hate Trudy's behavior in every point, but just think about it. If it was one of your friends and he would, they would have tried to kill yourself, would you have told them, ah, screw you, everyone hates you anyway, we just did it for your kid? If they behave the way Trudy does? Yes. Yeah, I'd eventually If they need snap. that reality check? Absolutely. Eventually, yeah. I'm not yeah. going to keep holding your hand. That quickly after someone did that? I've been in that position, and yes, I have. I'm on the fence personally because um, I agree with everything everyone's saying, but I think the timing is there something about the timing that does make me kind of step back a bit. Yeah, I'm not. Sh I'm on the fence how I feel about it. So you needed the reality check, but it's just for me. It feels like it's not the moment to do that. Yeah, but you also don't believe Sabine. You also don't believe Trudy should take responsibility for any of her behavior. You make excuses mm -hmm. for it all the time. So of course, for you, people should be tiptoeing around her again. And that's what you always expect everyone to do for Trudy because you relate to her, okay? But the truth is at some point people stop tiptoeing around you and it doesn't matter when, especially if you keep stabbing them with knives. I mean, if, if someone's bleeding out and they try to stab me, I'm going to let them die. I'm not calling 911. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, and you can say, that was the wrong time. They're dying. But yeah, they tried to kill me though. So I don't, I really don't Exactly. Care. I'm with, yeah. And once again, like, Amber didn't walk into that confrontational. Yeah. He just gave back what Trudy was giving her. And she's like, you know what? I came in to check on you. But if you're going to be a prat and if you're going to be a baby about it, this is, here's your truth bomb. It'd be very different if Trudy was not behaving the way she was and she tried to commit suicide. And then, you know, Amber said something like that. I'd be like, what the frick is wrong with you, Amber? But that's, that's not the circumstances we're dealing with here. And again, if this was her therapist, I would be like, what are you doing? You know, that's, that's not how you handle this. But Amber is not Trudy's therapist. She's another kid trying to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And if Trudy's allowed to behave this way because she's a child, well, Amber is too. 
Um, let's flip, flip the conversation a little bit um, and put ourselves in Trudy's shoes. Like, how do you think it felt to hear that no one at all in the mall likes you? Um, and do you think that really mattered to her? I think it probably would have hurt, but we've said it before. Like, Trudy hasn't made an effort either. So no. once again, like, yeah, nobody likes you, but what have you done for them to like you? You sat here and, you know, you have wallowed in everything. And once again, that's why Amber brought it all up. I actually think it's really good for her, Trudy, because it gets her dander up. Like, Trudy yeah. has been trapped in the mire of helplessness since all of this began. She hasn't been able to make a single choice for herself. Her life has been in the hands of others' decisions. And she has felt helpless in the mall. And she's got a lot of resentment for feeling that way. And Amber saying this gets her angry enough to make a decision for herself. And uh, I think that's really important. Like she has a mirror held up to her face and her first reaction is anger, you know, and defensiveness. But that's, yeah. the, it's better than her wallowing. Like this is the first step to Trudy mm. make, like choosing something for herself. She actually reacts and makes a decision. Fine. Nobody likes me here. I don't like them either. I don't want to be here anymore, you know, and Believe it or not, I think that's really healthy. I think she needed that mirror held up to her face. It takes her down a path of finally making some productive decisions for herself. And she's able to clear her head once she's able to do that. Um, so yeah, she didn't like having the mirror held up to her face. I'm sure it hurt to hear that. And of course, when someone tells you you're in the wrong, your first reaction is defensiveness and to blame everybody else but yourself. Um, but it's also the first step to self-reflection. Like you can't, you know, she has to see herself now and she has to go through the process of dealing with that. So actually, I think it's good for Trudy. And uh, I think it's what motivates her, her actions going forth. I, I kind of wonder though, I mean, they, they tell, she tells her that nobody gives a shit about her and that they only save her because of Brady. But at the same time, she's constantly been told that she's not a good mother and everything. And her thoughts on that is, why didn't you just let me die? You don't want me here. Why Why not let me die? Because oh. it wouldn't be fair to Brady. They just didn't want to do it to Brady. Yeah. And I also, I mean, I do think Amber is speaking more in anger than anything else. Because I think even if Brady wasn't the, the equation, Amber would have never let this girl die. But um, I think she's just very angry at Trudy's behavior and her reaction and she wants to put her in her place. And, uh, but yeah, I don't think any of them would have let Trudy die regardless of Brady, but, um, Brady definitely compounded the decision. You know, you have a child who needs you. Um, why haven't you even thought about her? So I, I get how Trudy would feel, definitely. But again, I think it's important for her because she needs the self-reflection. She needs to start down that path. And um, I've had it. I've had. To, I've had to have the mirror held up to my face, um, and I didn't like what I saw. I really didn't like who I was, and um, it sucks. It sucks to realize that you're a dick. <laughs> it's not fun to realize you're the bad guy of the story, and um, but. You can't improve yourself until you know the truth about yourself, you know. And it, it takes a brave person to recognize that. And Trudy will do that eventually. Um, but yeah, I, I, I get how, you know, it would be hurtful to hear it. And it only confirms what Trudy already wants to believe anyway. She already believes she's a bad mother. She already believes everybody hates her. So for her, it's just like, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's, you know, and it bolsters the anger in her like it's just confirmation it's what i always thought you were all against me anyway you know it's you, what you yeah you see sleep. that when she's talking to dal like it she finally gets like that confirmation of like this is what you've always thought of me so i'm just gonna leave now he looks very sad so would you if someone you cared for was ill you mean trudy i thought he cared for celine it's complicated so in a scene in the mall, uh, Chloe explains the intricacies of Bray's love life to Patsy, where she mentions it's complicated. Um, yeah, Chloe's quite astute 
with all the social goings on with a Bray, Trudy and Celine situation. On the other hand, Patsy's quite unaware and she's like generally played quite young, younger in terms of maturity. Um, yeah, what do you think about the two and how they're played? It's consistent with their characters and yeah. what we know about their upbringing. Chloe's definitely more independent and probably had to figure out a lot of these things for herself. You know, we've already seen that Chloe's quite capable of reading the room and the situation she's in where, you know, Patsy was definitely more sheltered. And so she didn't have to notice these things or think about them all that much. And uh, so, yeah, Chloe would definitely be able to suss out what's going on with all the older kids where Patsy would be like a little bit more clueless about it. And she, you know, for Patsy, it's very simple. You can only care for one person at a time, you know, and Chloe's like, nah, it's more complicated than that. You know, adult relate, you know, emotions are way more complicated. <laughs> it, it is I'm trying cute. to explain it. Yeah. yeah. To- <laughs> Let me dumb it down for you, sweetheart. <laughs> right. And it's cute because it's a reminder, you know, I remember being that age trying to figure out how those older emotions are supposed to work, you know, and you're trying to play it being a grown up and you're trying to learn how it works by watching your older peers. I had to laugh though at Patsy's comment, Chloe. Oh, perhaps you and I can share a boyfriend, Chloe. You know, like Trudy and Celine do. <laughs> I was just about to say that, yeah. <laughs> and and well, Chloe, just says, yeah, Chloe just says that it's wrong. And, you know, um, but when Chloe points out that it's wrong and that if Trudy would have died, poor Brady would have had no mommy, Patsy instantly goes to Celine with a, oh, and then you wouldn't have had to share Bray anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Patsy's I so guess, clueless. But I like that line because it shows that, like, you know, it, when you're in a group of people, whether it be your friends, your family, your peers, whatever, like, if there's that toxicity, like, everyone does eventually notice it. Like, so it's gotten to the point now where they know that something's going on between the three of them and it's creeping into every aspect of their lives. So true. Which I thought was kind of cool. Like, so once again, like being the target child watching this, like, you're like, oh, wait, how do they all know about this? Like, wow. Like, it's, it's causing a fracture in the group, even if it's not directly spoken against. It's also a very smart way of spelling out the sketchy circumstances for the mm-hmm. younger audience. Like, we're, you know, we're older, we immediately understand. You know, we can we can infer what Celine was thinking when she did what she did, but a kid watching it might not understand what just went down. So mm-hmm. having the girls, having the kids talk about it, you know, and putting it into terms that a, a younger audience would be like, oh, oh, those are the implications of what went down. That's sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> That's not cool. Yeah. That's not cool. Celine, what did you do? <laughs> exactly. Because I imagine a child watching it might not have understood the implications of Celine just leaving the room with the baby and doing nothing. And, you know, so it's like having the girls talk about it. It's like, oh. I just love how pragmatic Patsy looks at it with a, ah, if she was gone, you wouldn't have had to share him. You know, she thinks thinks so simply about, oh, well, if she was gone, then. Yeah, she spells it out. She's a child. She's just like, you wouldn't have to share Bray and, you know, you'd have Brady all to yourself. Aha! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh-huh. mm-hmm. The smoking gun. Hey, some of us were dumb kids watching this. Mm-hmm. It's a, I also like it because it really lays out just, this does, it's not a good look for Celine. You know, mm-hmm. and these are the things that Celine has clearly been thinking about too. <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't look good for me um and zondra's just staring at her like yeah what patsy said <laughs> just the uh, the water just checking the water what for well because it needs checking right what now i was gonna go get some breakfast great get some the lovesick puppy <laughs> i like to call him um so as he tries to avoid Zandra, Lex latches on to Tysan instead, as he follows her around in the hopes of continuing their so-called arrangement. Um, Tysan, however, is not really interested, but Lex still goes out and collects flowers her, but they're intercepted by Zandra. 
Uh, yes, panel, what, what do you think about that whole situation? Um, do you think Lex has genuine feelings for her or is, is it all an act just to get her into bed? Um, I think that it's sort of a reflection of the way Lex just sees relationships in general. It's a barter system, you know. Um, he wants something from Tysan and because he got it, he does feel some sort of shallow affection. Like, okay, that's mm -hmm. where my interests lie because I can get what I want there and it was nice. You know, and um, so he's continuing his play the game that he did with Zandra because that's what he thinks relationships are. So he's doing the dance that he would do with Zandra to prove himself to Tysan and doing all the things that he would do that would work with Zandra. But Tysan's just kind of like, well, that's that's interesting. Um, <laughs> seeing him like desperately try to pull, figure out what is the what do I have to do to you know, get what I want from you and to be in good with you and thinking that's how this works. And he's learning, slowly learning that that's not how Tyson functions. Um, it's kind of cute, I suppose. Why I, him? I always kind of wondered when you see Lex picking flowers out of all people, um, it made me think, is, was this something he used to see growing up? A guy doing something or having the feeling he done something wrong, going to pick flowers to get what he wants anyway, in hopes of the female doing what he wants again. Well, it's like getting lipstick for Zandra. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I know this is something, but he doesn't know what Tysan would want, so he's kind of exactly. at a lot. So he's, so like, he's doing what he would do for, like, Zandra or any other girl. Like, he's trying to figure out yeah. what works for Tysan, but Tysan is... Tyson and hey, maybe flowers. He likes herbs, right? <laughs> well, I think flower. I think boys mostly just think flowers for girls, anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even if like he knows that lipstick for Zandra, we don't know about this space cadet Tyson. So what do all girls like? Hmm, flowers. And she'll appreciate that I left them all to get them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even though I picked up these weeds on the side of the road, it's all good. <laughs> As for how genuine his emotions are, I think at this point in time, Lex still is. He even says it, he'll eventually say it later. He's not even sure what love is. He's not sure if it's something he can feel yet because he just hasn't had it yet because he's young and came from a very toxic environment where love was poisoned, you know? And um, so I think for Lex, it's for him, his interest is tied into, for many young people, if you're getting what you like out of a relationship, you like the relationship. You know, um, and it's not much deeper than that. So he likes Tysan right now. And I do think it's a bit, it's a little shallow. You know, it's not some deep connection. He doesn't really know her and he doesn't really know what to make of her. He's just focused on the one goal of getting her back into bed. You know, he certainly likes that. But um, yeah, I don't think it's much deeper than that. And I don't say that in like in a derogatory way, you know, to dog on Lex. It's just he's young and again, he's not there yet in his emotional maturity to feel that for anybody. Like you hit it. Like that is, that's the game. It's the game with him and Zandra. It's the game with him and who he's going to be with in later seasons. Like that's, that's kind of what he does and the routine. You'll see the routine change up when he does learn how to develop deeper feelings yeah. for people when it's more about it's less about winning them you know what i mean and more mm -hmm. about just taking them for who they are but yeah he he has to grow up to get there and uh he's just not there yet i thought it was cute um when you know tyson's clearly not in the mood and lex he, he thinks he's gonna like change your mind and <laughs> he's not he's not being rapey but he thinks he's being kind of like charming like oh yeah we'll see about that like in that sexy way <laughs> he's got to stick at his throat He's like, I'm just kidding, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're going to have to show me that next, like, later. Like, no, 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 I don't. Like, like okay, oh, you just... really weren't in the mood. Gotcha. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> don't hurt me. Like, please. But I guarantee he was super turned on. I guarantee oh. it. Oh, yeah, of yes. course. <laughs> Here's this strong woman who can take care of herself with yeah. a stick. There's all Good. sorts of. All sorts of um, metaphors with that oh, right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, her line afterwards is, "Yeah, I'm going to show you all this later." <laughs> it's like, yeah. Right. 
<laughs> she's got a lot to teach him. <laughs> I love the expression on her face when she's like, I never joke. And she might right? have said, call me mistress. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, like, yeah, looking back as an adult that scene is definitely kind of <laughs> awkward now but it's still funny Trudy I know you can hear me and I'm sorry I never made things stand up like this <laughs> if I'd have known Trudy <laughs> Trudy look I feel stupid standing here talking through the screen let me in I need to see you, Trudy. We can sort things. Think about the baby. We've been through too much together to let things end up like this, Trudy. Don't do this, Trudy. It doesn't have to be like this. Just let me explain. Uh, let's move on to Bray. After Amber refuses to play mediator, um, Bray attempts to apologize to a crying Trudy, but he struggles to find the words. Yes. I, do you think that he was generally concerned about Trudy's feelings, and state of mind at that time? Or is it because he just desperately wanted to be forgiven? I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. I think Bray and Trudy are trapped in a toxic cycle. And it's, it's not really either of their fault. You know what I mean? They're just very young. And this pattern of behavior is developed through time between them. And they, neither of them know how to get out of it. Um, I do think Bray cares for Trudy. But he can't, be, he can't care for her the way she wants him to. And he can't walk away. I do think he sees her as a sister. Maybe, you know, aside from Brady, she's the last of his family. He cared for her for months. She does matter to him a lot. Um, his panic at the thought of her dying, you know what I mean? Uh, those are, that was genuine. Uh, but I do think he, there is a desperation to everything to be okay between them. And he'll say anything to make yeah. everything okay. And we've seen that he doesn't want to actually deal with their conflicts. He wants to sweep them under the rug. He'll just say whatever it takes to make Trudy feel better. Because that's where he wants things to be. I do think he wants to be forgiven desperately. He mm -hmm. needs Trudy to not be mad at him. He can't handle Trudy being mad at him. He walks out, he leaves. He can't stay there when she's mad at him. He can't take it. Um, and that's part of Bray's hero complex. He doesn't like anybody feeling that way about him. It bothers mm -hmm. him. And the idea that Trudy won't let him in the room, you know, he can't handle that. And he's not really thinking that much about her feelings right now. He's just what he feels. He doesn't like the way this makes him feel. Mm. And then you have Trudy, who she knows Bray doesn't love her, but she just can't handle that. And she can't walk away either. She can't accept that he can't love her, and she can't accept what he's willing to give. So they're just stuck in this toxic circle, you know? And I feel bad for the both of them at the same time as being kind of sick of it. <laughs> because again, it is a cycle. We've just been watching it. They're just going in circles, these two. There's nothing Bray can say that's going to fix this. Just walk away. You need to just walk away for a while. Um, one of you has to walk away and break this cycle because it's never going to change. And, and listening to Bray at the door, he sounds like a guilty lover who betrayed her, you know, because he's just desperate to say whatever it'll take for her to forgive him. And, and, and Sabine had mentioned that must be confusing for Trudy. <laughs> it, it must have been, but to me it also always came across as Bray desperately needing to be cleared of any blame, you know? He, he wants her to be fine with him in case he ever tries something like this again, then it's not his fault. He tried everything. At least that's, that's how it feels to me. But one of the things I like about this moment, though, is that Bray is finally called out by Trudy for being a selfish pig and using her to get into the mall where he can do whatever he wants, where he can be top dog. And yeah, she, she even tells him, you tolerate me because I'm the mother of your brother's child. That's all I am to you, you know? And I, I just have to say the plastic knife. I love it. I just <laughs> see. I, I don't even know how to even go about this. Like, because 
you know, Trudy does make that whole point of like, you brought me here and the only reason you keep me around is because I'm the mother of your brother's baby. But it's like, you know, he didn't, that doesn't indebt him to her forever. And I think this is where I start to feel sort of sorry for Bray is because just because he wanted to do a good thing and help her out she has now, like, latched on and is leeching from him. And he just, like, I think part of him is trying to apologize that maybe she will go off to greener pastures and they can both start to live their lives because they were never going to be that couple that Trudy desperately wanted for whatever reason. Like, that just wasn't in the cards for them. Yeah, I I get what you're saying there. It I I get both of their sides. I do. I understand Trudy's anger. I understand that from her point of view, this is what it feels like. She's angry at him because he doesn't love her. And she's speaking out of that anger. You know, you don't love me, so you couldn't possibly care about me at all. Because that's the way Trudy sees it. Either Bray is in love with her or he, she means nothing to him. She can't imagine Mm -hmm. that there's a middle road for him. That he cares about her, but he doesn't want to be her boyfriend, exactly. you know? For Trudy, it's either you love me or I mean nothing to you. And because he doesn't love her, this is how she interprets his, him. You never cared about me. I never meant anything to you. You only used me. And that's how she feels because she's angry. But we know that that, that that they can't possibly be true. And I'm with Hill in the sense that for Bray, it isn't fair that because he wanted to do the right thing that he suddenly... That meant he was beholden to Trudy forever, you know, because his brother went and got himself killed. And but that's not what he's calling him out on in this what moment. What he's calling him out on isn't fair either. Yeah. Like, he didn't use Trudy to get in the mall. He didn't no. need Trudy to get in the mall. He got in the mall without her. You know what I mean? He used exactly. the mall for Trudy's sake. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. he used the mall rats so Trudy would have a safe place. He didn't need her. He never mm-hmm. needed Trudy. The mall rats accepted Bray wholeheartedly by himself and they would have been perfectly happy if he'd never shown up with trudy so that's not true um did he take care of her because she was pregnant with his brother's kid yeah but why is that a terrible thing why is it terrible that he kept taking care of her because they're now family she says it like it's this horrible thing that he did and again Mm -hmm. because he doesn't love her so she spits at his kindness because it wasn't what she wanted it to be. So what she's accusing him of isn't fair, but I completely understand why she feels that way because she's mad. And uh, but I- she didn't even want to be wanted to be alive. She seriously tells him, "Why didn't you just let me die?" Again, you know? but again, why is it a terrible thing that he didn't want her to die? Yeah, like she's angry at him because he didn't want someone he cares about to die. So I yeah. get Trudy's anger, I understand, yeah. but her accusations aren't fair. She's mad because he didn't love her and she wanted to die because of that. And all of a sudden he's the bad guy because he doesn't love her and because he took care of her, but he doesn't love her and yeah. because he didn't let her die, you know, and because, you know, and if he doesn't love her, then she should, he should have let her die, which isn't fair because basically Trudy's saying that if you don't love me, you can't possibly care about me in any other way. She's looking at things the way Patsy is, who thinks you can only care about a person one way and only one person at a time. And Mm. it's not that simple, you know? And I mean, you don't even have to care about a person and not let them die. It's just human decency, right? But Trudy's angry. Again, I understand she's angry and this is how she's interpreting things because she's pissed off. But I don't feel that what she's saying is fair or accurate to what actually happened. But I get it. Again, she needs to get it out. She needs to get all this anger out. And process it. And at first she didn't even want to. She didn't want him to come in there and be forced this apology on her. Because I'm sure that Trudy knew no matter whatever Bray said was not going to be what she wants to hear either. Yeah. So, you know, he's not going to walk in that room and be like, you know what? You killed, almost killed yourself. I am yours. Take me as you will. Like, <laughs> I think suicide's hot. That- yeah, <laughs> suicide's hot. Like, that was not going to happen at all. So no matter, him walking through that room was never going to be anything good. That's why I say it's a toxic cycle with these two. Because there's nothing either of them can do right now that can make this better. If Bray stayed away like she wanted him to, remember, when she woke up, the first thing she did was ask for him. Okay? 
if he stayed away, then she would have been upset that he wasn't fighting Bray still harder yeah. to talk to her. We've, we've, I've done this. I don't know if you guys have as a teenager. I'm sure. You want someone to fight for you. you like, if you ever told your parents, hey, you go away. And if your parents actually did, you'd get mad. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can't, oh, you really wanted to talk to me, didn't you? didn't even try, you know? So she would have gotten angry at him if he hadn't tried to break exactly. in the room and talk to her. Again, there's nothing he could have done. There's nothing yeah. he and that's have. that's why I feel for Bray because no matter what, he is the loser in me. Because he's not in love with her. There's nothing yes. he can do right because he doesn't love her. You used me, Bray, to get what you wanted. You really believe this, don't you? You bet I do. The only thing that puzzles me is why you just didn't let me die, seeing as I'm no use to you anymore. Trudy. You tolerate me because I'm the mother of your brother's child. But we all know who you really want to take her over, don't you? Wouldn't that be cozy? You, her, and my baby! Trudy, Trudy, listen to me. You've got this all wrong. It's all out of proportion. Get out! I don't remember cringing as much <laughs> the yeah. first time I viewed it as I did watching it again now. Like, he, Trudy picks up this plastic knife, threatens Bray, he backs away like this, this powerful weapon that's going to strike him yeah. down. And then Dow comes rushing in and uh, uh, like, cringe. Okay. I, hope it, okay. I don't remember Dal ever coming in. That was like <laughs> news flash to me today. But here's my theory on why it's a plastic knife. Because I remember seeing something of like, oh, plastic knife's not going to do anything. They're in the cafe. And if they are, like, to me, they're in her room. They're like, in her room. a plastic knife in her room. I mean, like, yeah, but okay, so. It, She's yeah. wearing housewares, she, right? So here's, but here's my thing about the plastic knife. Though. Yeah, the, yeah. With the cafe and being in a shopping mall, like when you go get food at a mall, they don't give you fine china. So I just I figure they're probably using more plasticware anyways because that's what they have, and why not? My theory was always just that when it was written, it probably was written with probably. a real knife, and then when they got on set and you're dealing with a bunch of underage, you know, actors. Yeah. You cannot, you know, you notice they don't use lethal weapon, nothing that can puncture. We never see yeah. knives being used in fights. Um, and I don't think Bray's backing up from the plastic knife. Uh, Trudy is clearly not in the right headspace. And she would have grabbed anything. If you get a fleshy thing. bit, and like she could have gone for Bray, an eyeball and still done some damage with that thing. Bray is backing away from her anger. Like, okay, I thought I could just put, you know, I could bum rush in here and make things right i could force right onto the situation she's having it i maybe i should have listened and left her alone it's more he's he's she is mad he can't make this right with some pretty words that he needs to leave the room and i do think her angst frightened him you know because he's used to true usually giving in or just scrat him and now she's threatening violence that's how angry she is with him and uh he's just like oh hey okay so i get a plastic knife but um you're mad you can do damage with exactly. like anything you pick some up some people might actually my noticeable experience <laughs> be more scared of someone with a plastic knife than an actual one because they have that look of vanity in their face that is true that's true like that kind of crazy <laughs> okay okay occasion with somebody and they pick up anything even if it's a flip-flop and a spanish hunt okay i know what that means you're gonna throw that at me <laughs> you're you're that angry you know so yeah i don't think he's running from the knife and it's just oh she's that angry that she would pick something up anything up and she'll he's find a way to hurt the you anger and the madness of trying to attempt that Right. I feel bad for Dal, though. I really do. I yeah. thought he was going to swoop in like a knight in shining armor. But he forgot he's only two feet tall. So is Allison. <laughs> like, the way that he handled him is how that kind of ended is with Bray, like, holding him by the top of the head and, like, Dal, like, swinging, trying to get at him, like you do with a little kid, you know? That's <laughs> exactly what I've seen when that scene plays. It's just. That, right? yeah. That's, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just really down down come on Ugh. like bless your heart now but and the way Bray takes hey. him down so easily yeah. like I don't want to hurt you 
Okay. And Dow's like, ah, he can't and do that. He's just pinned to the ground. Like he's on the verge of tears because it's like, that hurts. And I didn't think it would hurt. And <laughs> he, like, oh, you almost see the brain turning of like, that was a really stupid idea. And now I feel pain. And why? He was trying to be so valiant, you know? And it didn't work out like it does in the movies. A, a effort, Dow. A effort. A effort. You know, and even Trudy's not really sure what to do with that. She was just like, oh, my, my I hero. Guess. Guess. Even though he's like four feet taller than you. Um, I mean, no one expected Dal to do that. It was like, he just, he just goes running. <laughs> you almost hear him say like Leroy Jenkins at one point. Like, I could see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Dal. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, right? Like, it's a dumb move, but. Whatever, but that did leave uh, Dal and Trudy, Trudy in an embarrassing, like a compromising situation because you know Dal has just basically yeah. humiliated himself to pr- try to protect her, and so even if she didn't yeah. want to talk but, to him, she so yeah. Now that just now. starts open a whole like can of worms, kind of the same situation that she is with Bray. Like Dal has now tried to save her and Trudy does not want she's actually kind of in Bray's shoes where there's an yeah. emotional obligation exactly. to somebody who did something really great you know like that's how Bray has felt about Trudy she is an emotional obligation and now Dow is an emotional obligation for Trudy she can't exactly tell him thanks, but oh, no thanks, thanks for that but I don't really want to talk to anybody she's got to be like oh I'm um, sure did you want to come in my room and talk <laughs> and Dow's like yes <laughs> it i've done it we'll both pretend that you didn't right? totally lose <laughs> could you just imagine if the next scene like he was sitting there with like a bag of peas just like nursing his his wounds <laughs> licking himself like that evil brain he hurt me no love for dal today <laughs> <laughs> nice effort dal shut it would be like a we should give out awards like yeah participation, gets participation trophy? trophy he tries i wish i had 10 of them on my team he tries so hard i can't get through to trudy i want you to tell her how sorry i am you want me to square things up with trudy i didn't say that knowing how things are with you and celine that's neither here nor there excuse me bray but it's both here and there which come to think of it just about sums you up doesn't it Spread yourself thinly enough and we'll all get a piece, is that it? I'm sorry I came. Not half as sorry as I am. Um, sticking with Bray for a minute, um, <laughs> how on point do you think Amber's comment was um, when she mentioned that if he spreads himself thinly enough, we'll all get a piece? Um, yeah, do you think she was right when she mentioned that? Yes, I love that line. I do think there's some truth to it in the sense that Bray wants to be beloved by everybody in a way. Like he may not want to be Mr. Popularity, but he does not like when people he likes doesn't don't like him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he tries very hard to be appealing to the people he likes. And um even even someone like Ebony, you know what I mean? He works really hard to stay on a certain ground with people and uh so that they will like him or trust him and that's very important to him and it's not a like a bad thing about a person you know but um it can be irritating in the sense that like as we've seen the way he's handled trudy trying to do this trying to be the great guy for everyone and rather than just being honest and truthful it it becomes really messy uh, but I, I also think some of it is just Trudy, I mean, Amber being jealous and she's angry at Bray and disappointed in him. And so she's basically treating him as though he did all this on purpose. Like this was an intentional, like he was playing the field on purpose, which I don't think Bray was doing. I just think he got in over his head. But it's it's out of her own, like, I liked you and I wanted you and then you chose Celine and... Uh, you know she's i think it's more just that i like how amber (laughs) uses like his his one sort of like his biggest trait against him i guess like that is his thing like he wants to be liked by everyone and now i'm gonna use that that personality type and i'm gonna throw it in your face because i mean it's not like it's a bad trait to have i mean you know that's what she does as a leader trying Mm -hmm. to get along with everyone but she's upset with it because of the circumstances right yeah. now. 
you know, she's basically calling him out for being a player, even though Bray isn't a player, but she feels that way about him. And that's what she's calling him Mm -hmm. out, you know, like, oh, all his girls get, you know, get to be part of your harem, you know, and but Bray's like, it's not what this is, damn. But that is like that, like you said, it's Amber's calling him out on what she perceives. And even though it's not what Bray's trying to do, it comes off as that way. And it is right. I like that it she does. kind it of does calls out his bullshit about it. Like, listen, this is what you're doing. And whether you don't see it as such, I'm calling you out on it. Yeah, yeah. That's the way you said it is perfect. You may not be trying to do this, but this yeah. is how this is what's happening. You trying to be the nice guy for everybody is this is the mess it's become, you know, and it's not it's not cute. It's not cute, Bray. Really? No. And really he's just being golden football child, you know. All star quarterback. And instead of dealing with it, he, you know, wallows in his helplessness and kind of plays a victim in it. Exactly. You know? And she's Never. just like, Ugh, my man needs to take responsibility for himself. <laughs> not your man yet. <laughs> but yeah, Bray tried to play the nice guy. You know what I mean? With everybody, instead of dealing with these conflicts straight on, you know, and it's set the one person he actually wants. And he's just like, damn, I don't, know, I don't know how to get out of this hole. I don't know how to get out of this. Like, I do feel sorry for him in a way, you know, because again, he didn't ask for all this. No. And, but there are certain situations he could have handled better. But it's part of his character flaw, not wanting to deal with confrontation, you know, that's something he has to learn to deal with i mean i realize with a lot of these conflicts if like we just all would have sat down and talked to each other it would have been so much easier but that is one of the things i do like about the conflicts and the earlier seasons they are character motivated exactly. you know the characters their personalities are what move the plot they do things based yeah. on their flaws and stuff and um that's what creates the conflict you know i i like that as well but it's just like man we could have just all sat down and been like, yo, Dal, you like Trudy. Trudy doesn't like you. Also, she likes Bray, but Bray doesn't like Trudy. And then Amber likes Bray. Like, whoa. <laughs> Work it out, kids. Yeah, adults can't even do that. <laughs> no. Like I said, Jack, we're not joined at the hip. Let me try and get out of it. What I do in my time is my business. <laughs> no one leaves me carrying the can, it's not. Don't give me that. You just want someone to hold your hands. What? You scared you won't be able to do it by yourself. Rubbish! Whose idea was it? Good fight! Whose half baked idea, don't you mean? They look really serious about it. Dal's not a slave like you, like the rest of them. What's going on? You keep out of this! And you keep out of it! If it wasn't for you, none of this would be happening. Watch your mouth, Jack! Or else what? What do you think about their massive argument on the balcony um, with their tag team partners, Trudy and Celine? (laughs) What do you think about that scene? Such a lover's quarrel. (laughs) <laughs> seriously it's just it's just a couple yeah. who can't agree on what they should prioritize in their relationship and their besties are like backing them up <laughs> exactly so, I, I do think it's funny that their backup like Celine and Trudy have their own <laughs> reasons for being there it has nothing to do with the boys whatsoever I mean, like, a, like a proper school fight in a way the way it was set up it was quite exactly interesting yeah I liked it yeah it goes back to that whole, you know, 90s yeah. after school drama. It does make me laugh the way Trudy backs up Dal um, against Jack because, <laughs> like, <laughs> because Dal has, she just learned that nobody likes her, right? right. <laughs> but then Except Dal, for apparently like, Dal. Apparently Dal. So, like, she's got his back suddenly, like, she's jumped on the Dal <laughs> band- bandwagon. Like, he's the only one who likes me. So. So she's immediately willing to pick fights with other people for his sake. It is kind of funny, though, that they had just had a big fight. Like, the brain Dal thing had just happened, and then you turn around, and they're Jack and Dal are fighting. And uh, I love the things that they say to each other, because you got Jack, who's just like, we have obligations. You, you know, you have, you know, responsibilities to me. You know, we agreed to work on this, and you keep running off to hang out with a girl. Gross. You know, a human being. What are you doing, Dal? It's not what we're about. <laughs> right. And then you got Dal who's just like, dude, I don't have to help you with this stuff. Like, there's, I didn't sign a contract to work with you. Um, I was doing it because I was bored and had nothing else to do. I have a life of my own and accusing him like, you're just scared you can't do it yourself. And <laughs> Yeah. 
You're so cute. <laughs> Mom and dad, stop fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I almost want to believe that like the whole rest of the tribe comes out, not to really just like to add fuel to the fire, but with the popcorn to watch the two lovers quarrel. I like, love yeah, how like, funny. Like, Let's take that. Okay. <laughs> I'm on Dow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I love the fact that yeah. Lex bets on Dow. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's completely right, but yeah. <laughs> he's like, Dow's got guts. <laughs> right? <laughs> that goes a long way in a fight. Dow is so close to the ground that he could go, like, sweep his ankles. Great center and of gravity. Knock him down. down. Yeah, exactly. Like a little chihuahua. Yeah, Jack's not winning that fight. <laughs> No. There is a woman's honor on the line. I'm honestly on Dal's side in this fight because, okay, granted, he shouldn't keep blowing Jack off if he says he's going to be there, but otherwise, he hasn't done anything wrong, you know? And I do think he's right, Jack. It's like, dude, Jack, yeah. if, you, if you think you can do this, then just do this. And the truth is, you can't do it without him. That's why mm -hmm. you're mad. But you can't just admit, look, I can't do this without you. So you're yelling at him because he's not around. But he isn't obligated to help you with any of this. You know, okay. there's no law or rule saying he has to. Um, it was just an idea you guys had. Yeah, there's other priorities. Not to mention, it's not like Dal's blowing off the wind turbine for nothing. He's no. staying with somebody who literally just tried to kill themselves. And he feels exactly. a personal responsibility to that. And Jack's lack of understanding for that is, it's almost like Jack's jealous that Dal found a girl, you know? Because he can't. This is supposed to be the Cooties Free Club, man. What are you doing? <laughs> girls are bro. gross. I thought we had that in common. I do like how that comes back to bite them in the ass later on. The two weeks, yeah. something that comes plays back again and again with them. Yeah. No, but I I do think that's kind of where it boggles down to is that Jack is kind of like the science guy who is the nerd who doesn't get a girl, and suddenly there's Dal who has kind of more who has more emp empathy, not kind of more empathy, but does have that empathy and. You know, even, even though there's no way he is getting Trudy, there's that little glimmer of hope and Jack's taking that out on him. Yeah. It, it's cute and funny, and but I think that's where the real issue comes from, is that Del has empathy and Jack doesn't, and it's working in Del's favor. I also think Jack's just, you know, uh, kind of jealous that Del has other interests outside of him and what they do. You know, he thought he... You know, he really does love working with Dal and he likes having oh. Dal's attention and spending time with Dal. He's got this friend, you know, who's like him and into the same things as him. And so he's got that kinship. His first friend. Yeah. And it's a fear that, you know, Dal has other interests, other people who like him. He's good at other things. He doesn't need this the way Jack needs it. Yeah. It's true. You know? And that can be threatening to a friendship. Like, where are you going? You're hanging out with somebody else? Well, I can dance too. Why don't you invite me? <laughs> yeah. Because Jack's social skills are not the best at this point. How many did you take, Sal? I... I don't really... Not many. Well, was the bottle empty or half or what? I don't know. What are you asking me for? I never saw the bottle. Okay, okay. Forget I said anything. Hang on. You took the baby from the room in the night. Didn't you notice a pill bottle then? Why should I? I thought Trudy was asleep. But if she was just asleep, then why didn't the baby wake her? Look, what is this, an inquisition? You know what happened as well as I did. Just get off my back! Something's not right. What do you think, Lex? Uh, let's move on to, uh, yes, yeah, Sandra. Uh, as she turns detective, um, she realizes something doesn't quite add up with the night that Trudy overdosed. Um, we see her confront Celine, and she accuses her of leaving Trudy to die. Um, yeah, she's been quite on point throughout the whole episode, trying to figure out what's going on with Celine. Um, what do you think of her detective skills? And does it surprise you all that even though she is so aware, when it comes to Lex, it, she's just completely blinded? I picture Zandra as the girl who watches too many true crime dramas <laughs> and like finally this crime like falls into her lap and she gets to be like, you know, her favorite detective on TV and like suss it out. And I think it's hilarious. Like, 
it's so funny because she's like I, i've been in this show like i've watched this episode of law and order and i'm gonna figure it out and I'm like, it's, oh, uh, bless her. Like She's thinking the same thing Patsy is. Even her looks of like, you know, where were you? Like, it, how many pills were in the bottle, Celine? What do you mean you don't know? You were right there. Like, I'm on to you. I, I love watching Zandra break it down. Like the way she yeah. gets the clues and then asks very, you know, relevant questions to them. Like, wait a second. Well, you know, because it, it starts innocent enough with Ryan asking, well, was, was she really trying to kill herself? And Zandra, like, well, it depends on how many pills she took. And we actually don't know. Yeah. Celine, how many pills did she take? And then Celine immediately goes on to defensive. And, you know, Zandra's just pointing, well, you were there. You were the only one in the room who saw the pills. You, and and yeah. then Celine digs herself a hole by saying she didn't see the pill bottle. And Zandra immediately is like, how does that make any sense? How did you right? not see the bottle? you were in the room and and putting all together and of course it doesn't help that celine is acting so freaking guilty <laughs> and because apparently she didn't think out a story like <laughs> all of that time all that time you were just sitting there you didn't think out. a story come on uh so i really love watching zondra piece it together because those are the exact same things i would have asked you know like wait a second right. you know and and i i love it when she calls her out on it like, because that's what Zondra tends to do. She calls people out. Lex is her blind spot. That is her one blind mm -hmm. spot. But when it comes yeah. to, you know, sussing out people and their motivations and why they do certain things, Zondra is usually right on point. And mm -hmm. she's called out, you know, Celine and Amber before on um, where their feelings really are. And um, yeah, I love when she does it. And Celine freaks out. <laughs> You know what's interesting? Now, Celine falls apart, mm -hmm. you know, being confronted like that. She just starts to cry, and then Zondra feels bad. Like, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you upset. And gives her a flower and runs out, right? But I was wondering, what if Celine just admitted, yes, I did? I get, Something tells me that Zondra would have actually been very understanding. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think she would have been, too. And I think the... I think the whole flower thing is telling because at that point, like, Celine knows she's kind of gotten her in a trap. And it's like... If I cry, I'll get out of it because she probably doesn't want to have to deal with me crying, and it works. The I was going to say, I wasn't too. sure how genuine that cry was. I felt like he was just doing it. Yeah, yeah, I don't. To get out. Yeah, I think that was a. I want to make you uncomfortable so that you leave. And Zandra instantly like doesn't know what to do when she freezes and she like leaves the flower and runs. Like that was the cry of someone who's been caught. Like, have you ever seen someone start crying when they get arrested? They're not crying over the crime they committed. They're crying because they got caught. And now they're having to deal with the reality that they got caught. That is why Celine's crying. She's crying because somebody is on to her. You know, and she can't hide what she did. As long as she decides to tell everybody, you know, there's enough evidence for everyone to believe it. That's why Celine is crying. She's not crying out of guilt. She's crying because she's no. got caught and she's scared, you know? Yeah. She's terrified, and so she's just like, blah, 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 you know, but yeah, it's she's crying because she got caught, and she's terrified of what that's going to mean if everybody knows what she did. But I yeah. think I, something, I feel like Zandra would have been, like, actually very understanding if Celine had come forth and told her, you know, well, what she did. We've talked about it before that Zandra mm -hmm. is pretty understanding, and there's been times where she's... Like, I can't remember what instance it was, but we went on about it for a while. Like, I don't think she would have been like, oh, you did the right thing, but she would get yeah, it. Yeah, but she, She'd understand, she like, would have, like, an understanding. Like, yeah, you guys have had a really awful relationship, and, you know, you have every reason to hate her because the way she's treated you, and you guys have been fighting over a guy, and, you know, I think she'd be like, whoa, I can't believe it, but, yeah, I think she would have been quite understanding. They would have worked together to like hide the evidence. Yeah, I do think Zandra would have tried to find some way to rationalize it for her. Zandra would have had Celine yeah. have a better story so that this whole situation wouldn't have worked. Like, or she would have been like, well, she didn't die, so you don't have to worry about it. It's okay. Oh, sure. She's yeah. fine, Celine. You know what I mean? You, may, you had a lapse in judgment. You got upset, but no harm, no foul, right? There's nobody. Yeah. It's very so. Yeah. Or she would have been like, that Trudy's a right cow. <laughs> Right. Hey, this is Zandra. She wanted to kill Ebony for looking at her guy. Exactly. So I think she would have been really understanding. I would have loved to see that <laughs> It's a shame we don't get to see that. That would have been good. I think that's why Zandra drops it so quickly. She's just like, oh, wow, you did that. Okay, yeah, I think she, okay. she gets it. Here's a flower. I won't bring it up again. <laughs> 
We're good. That's dark. She's alive. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Sweep it under the rug. Does it come back up again? Like, there's no Zondra real... Zondra doesn't bring it back again. Yeah. It does, but it's not Zondra. It just gets kind of fizzled out. Celine brings it up to Trudy at some point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, Zondra, she, she got the answer she was looking for, and she was like, damn. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. Not going to mess with you. Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> right? Here's a flower. Don't don't come after me. We're so cool, right? <laughs> right? I do find it funny that she leaves a flower and takes, like, the rest of the vase. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, I want you to, I want you to be happy and I don't want you to come after me, but not enough that you get all of these. Yeah, because well, yeah. she's been like waiting and for days here. for the Bye. flowers from Lex. Yeah. <laughs> the whole bunch. I know. Hey, and and what would have, she'd given Celine all those flowers, people would have asked questions. At least Lex would have. Yeah, and Zandra's, she's pretty good at discretion, so. Speaking of the flowers, um, I thought this was interesting when she shows them off to Tysan. And Tysan's like, oh, you know, she seems genuinely happy. And I know that some people are like, was Tysan faking it? You know, was she annoyed that Lex had got Zandra flowers? And I'm like, no, I think the, the way Tysan saw it is her plan was working. working Look, yeah. Lex is becoming a better person and he's making it up with Zandra. <laughs> Right, <laughs> I am a guru. I did it. I am and... curing him. <laughs> nice flower, Zandra. She's so proud of herself in that moment. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was funny, and I was like, I, I want to make sure I mention that. You ready? Nearly. Just give me a minute, please. Okay, but make it quick. That leads us to our final thoughts of the episode. As with all the events come to a head within the mall, Trudy and Dal come to the decision to leave without Brady. Um, yeah, what were your immediate thoughts when you discovered that Trudy was going to leave Brady behind? Um, I actually thought it was the first real healthy decision she had mm -hmm. made for herself. Yeah. I mean, it sucks because like in the grand scale of things, like a girl, like she grows up or she would have grown up without her mom. All, for these entire, what, 22 episodes, it, Brady has almost been a burden. So it's like she would have been better off in the long run, I think. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like it was a bad decision yeah. that she was making. From what we'd seen, because up until this point, we have not seen evidence that Trudy could be a good mother or that she could learn or wanted anything to do with it. All we have seen is that, like you said, it's a burden. She didn't want this. She never got a choice in this. In an ideal world, Trudy would have had the choice, would have had the chance to choose what she wanted to do about being pregnant, and she didn't get that, you know. And exactly, it was just an axe hanging over her head mm -hmm. at the end of the world, you know. And then, of course, the feelings that are supposed to come with motherhood did not come with motherhood. Instead, she got depression. Yay! This is so fantastic, yeah. you know. And so, as far as I was concerned, I was like, this is actually a really healthy decision for the both of them. You know, um, yeah, because there are plenty of people who grow up without their biological parents who are just fine. You know, mm -hmm. that's not what makes you a family. It's not what makes you a parent. It doesn't dictate that connection that you have with your parents. Um, it clearly wasn't healthy as far as I could see for Trudy to be there trying to take care of this baby that she didn't want. I, 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 the way things are going, Trudy could just hurt this kid, and damage this kid and traumatize this child. You know, it, as is, it was better to me that Trudy just leave this child alone with somebody who would be better for her, you know, and, and it would be better for Trudy because she's been so unhappy and it's like, it's okay to admit that you didn't want to be a mom, that this isn't for you. It doesn't make you a bad person. But that's you know? also um, what Trudy says in her note that she leaves with Brady. It says, yeah, yeah, dear Brady, you deserve off. better, so I'm going away. I don't think I'm a bad person, but I am a bad mother. You're better off without me. Ask the others. I know you'll be loved and looked after. And then see that little P.S. This yeah. isn't your fault. It's mine. Yeah. So I thought it was a really healthy decision that she made. Exactly. Like I, I give I give credit for Trudy for doing that because I mean putting your child for adoption is a really difficult thing to do, you know, and it can be hard to admit that you aren't the best person to raise your own offspring, you know. And it's okay. It doesn't make you selfish. It doesn't make you a terrible person. Not all of us are cut out to raise a human being. It's really freaking hard, even when you want it 
even when it's what you've always desired, it's still really hard. And uh, not everybody is Eve's that impotent to be her suicide attempt. The Trudy makes a choice for herself and no more productive method than just trying to kill herself, you know? Interesting, though, is that Del is fine with it. I was just about to mention that, yeah. It was very surprising. But <laughs> I think he he understands, too. Like, I think he sort of deep down gets it that Trudy wasn't in the right frame of mind to be this girl's mother. And, I don't know. Everything that we've kind of you know. seen from Dal so far, I, I don't know, it just doesn't fit with me. I, uh... Well, Dal, I think, is a little blinded by his crush on Trudy right now. And what he has seen is that Trudy and Brady don't mix. It's a mess, you know? And here she is offering to leave with him, this girl that he likes, and leave the messy part behind? Come on, can you really blame him for being totally fine with that decision? Yeah. He's like 14, and he's just like, oh, you know, I, I mean, if she had decided she wanted to take Brady, I'm sure Dal would have backed her up, you know? But it's a relief that she doesn't want to bring Brady. Yeah. The, the, the thing that makes her absolutely miserable, the thing she's really bad at, you know? <laughs> like, also, Dal maybe deep down realizes that it's not his choice to make that decision either. Yeah, yeah there's a lot there. I mean, it clearly, we know that Trudy and Brady's relationship isn't all there. And who is Dal to say, hey, listen, you know, <laughs> it is your kid. Bring her along. He's already seen what being forced into motherhood has done to Trudy's state of mind. Exactly. So what, like, seriously, what good would it have been if he'd been like, you really shouldn't leave your baby. She would have gone. <laughs> because uh, if, yeah. if he told her she would have to bring Brady, then Brady would have come come after them straight away. Well, not just that, but Dal also seems to understand that this motherhood thing isn't for Trudy. It's too much for her. He says so much. He says as much to Zandra in the last episode when she brings Brady to Trudy and Trudy leaves them, like, flees the room. And Sandra's yeah. like, what did I do? What did I say? And he's like, don't you get it? It's too much for her. You know, like, mm -hmm. this isn't what she wants. So he, get, he gets it. And again, there's a convenience of not having to lug a, you know, lug a baby around. Yeah. I'm not going to, like, hey, if you and I are going on a road trip, I'm not going to complain if you decide to leave your dog behind. Right. I mean, like, oh, that just makes this so much easier. Yeah. That's fine. He gets to do what he originally <laughs> wanted. Just with Trudy instead of Amber. Yep. And he doesn't have the headache of a baby. That's making his partner totally miserable. And to be fair, in the moment Trudy had Brady and they had to vote about if she was allowed to stay, he, he simply said, I don't care either way if the baby stays or goes. And he also voted yeah. against Trudy and the baby staying because yeah. it was a lot. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, come on. Let's just be realistic here. Again, if she had chosen to take Brady, I, I believe wholeheartedly he would have supported her. But he's certainly not going to complain if she leaves the baby behind. I don't know. I still, I still find it surprising from him. Um, I, I can't explain it. It's just... It's a gut feeling? Yeah. It just doesn't fit completely. I don't know. I just think it's funny that he conveniently forgets that he did vote her out when she's complaining yeah. about everybody. And what it feels like to be voted on. He's like, well, I'm glad you stayed. <laughs> you well, you voted her out. <laughs> you didn't want yeah, her. He was yeah. first when the baby was born to get her stuff. Because he's he, he a decent person. Yeah. Nah, at the end of the day, I totally understand why Dal would let Trudy leave her daughter behind. There's no, There hasn't been any attachment between Trudy and her daughter. He doesn't have a reason to believe that Trudy will regret this decision. Um, mm. Again, it isn't his decision to make. It's Trudy's decision. He doesn't get any say in this whatsoever. And uh, he has no call to judge the choice she's going to make. And um, he has also witnessed the rough time she's had of it. I don't think he wants to make it any harder, you know, for her. He doesn't want to make her feel guilty about that choice. He's just glad to be getting out of the mall. Yeah, well, wouldn't we all like to get out of there with that much drama? <laughs> It's overwhelming, all of it, you know what I mean? And the idea that you can just escape all the problems. The fantasy that if Brady is causing all the problems for Trudy, and if they leave Brady behind, Trudy will finally be happy. You know, that's something you would emotionally latch on to. 
and you you would wouldn't occur to you that uh he has again he has no reason to believe that Trudy's going to regret this or change her mind or suddenly realize he doesn't know she's going to have an epiphany down the road everything we've seen shows that Trudy didn't want this she doesn't want this her epiphany is actually a great surprise you know so yeah I, I wasn't surprised at all that Dal didn't mention it didn't say anything didn't have an opinion on it what did you think of um Trudy's um tribe style I love it it's one of my favorites yeah I the one thing that I don't like and it's really nitpicky, is her bangs. But other than that, I love the look. I was just glad that she was finally changed out of all those clothes. That's probably why she yeah. was really cranky. She was really cranky right? because of those clothes, you know? And it's nothing like getting a new outfit to feel like a brand new person. <laughs> exactly. That's <laughs> <laughs> a fair of pants. <laughs> How long has she been gone without pants? Nothing fit her for months, this poor girl. Oh, man. Yeah. I love her drive style. It looks, it's adorable. It's really nice. And it's the first yeah. look at who Trudy actually is. Mm -hmm. It's almost like what she was wearing before was a cloak of depression, a cloak of helplessness. It was just representation of the situation she was in. And she casts it off. And we get to see Trudy. This is who's been underneath here the whole time. It still felt like this kind you know, of distressed yeah. mother look, like with the veil and it's like the covering of her emotions. It feels a bit, I don't know. Um... Well, she <laughs> has to have a little melodrama. This is Trudy we're talking about. <laughs> Just a little <laughs> drama. <laughs> a tad. Mm -hmm. a smidge. A tad. She got This is Antonio. <laughs> she does it with style. <laughs> right. She does everything with style. But yeah, it's it's super cute. And I feel like I'm seeing her, like this is the start, like this is the first time I'm seeing Trudy, who she actually is. And um, so looking back at it, it actually, it's like, oh, look, there she is. There's my favorite character. She's finally coming to bloom. <laughs> Even watching it today, like I had that moment of like, oh, wow, that's that's more Trudy than what we've seen before. She switches from Moody to Trudy. <laughs> I was proud of her for... Um, making a decision for herself and taking responsibility for that decision you know that's one of the hardest steps to becoming an adult is making choices for yourself and i'm proud because this is exactly what she and bray need is they need the snapping of that toxic relationship somebody had to walk away you know and i was proud of her for being the one to do it and realizing that this is this is ridiculous. I can't do this anymore. I'm out. Do something about it. Don't sit there wallowing. Don't sit there crying. Change your life. Go. So I was really proud of her. Hard decision to make. So that brings episode 22 to a close. Thank you once again to the panel. And we'll see you in episode 23, where we'll be introduced to KC. Uh, see ya. Until then, bye. 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 Bye.